Hello, how are you today? This is Jilly Bling of JillyBling.com. I hope all is well with you and you don't have fires like we do here. We're at level one, which just means get ready. So it's really smoky out there, a little bit scary. Um, so looking at these, what do you think? This is a few projects for the traveling box and you could do it in more traditional Christmas type stamp or the gnomes. I know everyone is loving the gnomes, so I want to do something with this project today. But you could put three um, little mini cards in each of these boxes. And oh, I said what color markers I used. And you do a little envelope liner. This one is very simple. So the intent is just to keep them simple so you could get through the three of them really easily. And then they go inside the little box. But receiving this as a gift, it's just, first of all, so cute. And it just feels so good in your hand. I mean, I would love to receive that. And the gnomes. And I'm using some old product along with the gnomes. Little Christmas chair, holly jolly everything. Cute, cute, cute. I think I want to do another one like this with this um, wizard, magical little gnome. And again, trying to keep it cute. I could have put the house in here and colored all that, but it takes more work. And notice how He's holding this little banner. Let me get it up close. See how he has linen thread and he's holding the banner? We'll do that. And then the last one, this one I did spend a little bit more time on the inside. And it has the house. And purple and blue, because everyone seems to like purple and blue. I do too. Huh? That rhymed. Okay, so let's do this one. Oh no, let's do the one with the banner. Because this one is just coloring. Everyone could do that. And eventually three of them will go into here. So when you get the traveling box, a few people have had questions about it and I thought I'd just address it here. Not that it's hard, but the traveling box is like when you come to class, everything on your table was brought in in a box. So when you get a traveling box, everything you need is in the box. So this is what the box looks like. And it has all the ink colors for the gnome project and the traditional Christmas. So I'm gonna go through here for the stamp set. I know I'll be using this one, gnome for the holidays. Um, I know I'll be using some blocks. I put just three blocks in here because I keep running out of blocks and I figure you're not gonna be using all of the stamps, so we'll need this. Um, also in here is paper. If you're doing white or vanilla, you're probably like, what does that mean? So the easiest way to show you is the gnomes. They're done on vanilla. They have vanilla envelopes, vanilla paper, and the, um, Christmas, Christmas gleaming. This set is done on the white paper. See how it has white envelopes? So, because of that, I know we'll be using this box, these papers. Here are rhinestones. That's for the traditional Christmas. So we won't use those. Um, we'll use some vanilla scraps of paper. I'm not sure what size, so I'll just pull all of them out. This paper is just in case you want to do any extra layering or if you get creative. These colors match um, the paper base colors. Here is paper base. These I was focusing on for vanilla and these were the white, but feel free to change it up if you'd like. So I'll take out one of these pool party card bases. 
and we'll be doing three of them so I'll take out one of these that's the box and I got those from clear bags and they might have them in the catalog we'll need dimensionals regular is a mini um, you can use one of these that's already done or you can stamp your own and cut it out so I'm going to do a wizard so I'll take out this little wizard guy and you could put some of these gnomes on the inside of your card and if you do if you can stamp the inside and leave the outside cut out pieces for um, everyone's outside because it'd be terrible if you plan on doing the project and none of the cutouts were there and a little envelope here's the vanilla ones more white little paper little ribbon we'll use some linen thread rhinestones ink pads I know we'll use memento because this one uses um, the blends for coloring okay so that's it with the box for now I might have to go pick back through here to find other pieces but for now this is good okay so this is what we're gonna work on ink pad envelope linen thread well let me get to the papers so in here the solid vanilla is for the inside this small piece is perfectly cut to fit on your card front and there's all different varieties two-sided and this is for the envelope there's a die for that envelope okay so done with that so let's see envelope that could set off to the side so looking at this one let's just start with oop, I don't need two of these let's start with the card base fold it in half some of them are scored some aren't easy enough to take care of that okay and next is the layer of designer paper Ooh, do you like that a little bit busy what do you think I think it might be too busy okay so I'll put that on right on top Oh, and for this project, you need two of these. Because see this little die cut piece on top? That gets cut with this die, which is stitched on both sides and it cuts in the middle. And this is from the Hippo, what's it called? Hippo and Friends dies. And this die set, I think I mentioned it before. I keep using it. I love all the basic shapes in here. It does have these cute little animals, and if I recall correctly, the stamp set, the words that go along with the hippo, they're really cute. I think there's one, this one here, this horse, it's like something like a unicorn. They're just really cute. So it's a great bundle, but I keep using it over and over for the um, basic shapes, die shapes. Okay, so I'll cut this out. There it is. Hold on. Just a minute. I dropped my linen thread. Okay, there's the linen thread. And this is for the envelope die. And don't worry if you don't have paper down here. You just want to focus on getting this top section. 
So there's that. Since I have this here in my hand, let's do the envelope. So to do the envelope, open up the flap, kind of turn the flap. Let me make sure you're seeing this. So here's the envelope. Push this backwards. And then this piece, insert it inside. And notice how there's these little shoulders on here. I want to have those dropped down below the crease. So this corner right here is lined up with the crease. Only because if it was higher, you wouldn't have room to stick your envelope closed. And also that little piece, when it gets folded over, it doesn't look that good. Okay, so now that it's tucked into place, put this back, flip it over, and put adhesive right on here. And I'm doing adhesive just on the top for a reason. I'm making sure it's lined up square up here. Um, so the adhesive is here only because if you had adhesive down in there, chances of you getting it in place are very slim. Um, so since it's kind of free floating, it might shift just a little bit with each envelope open and closed, but that's fine because it'll stay right in place right where we want it. Okay, so I'm going to fold it backwards just because it matches the card and it's so cute and I want it to be seen. So that part is done. Oh, the box, since this is here, to do the box, get your fingers on the inside, pop it open, and just make the box. Okay, so that can go in there. So, onto the card. This piece has no stamping on it, so I will attach this. You can attach it so that these little um, flat pieces are straight up and down with the card, or you could turn it at a bit of an angle. This one I turned at an angle, so I'm going to do that again. The other two samples, I kept them straight. So these two get to be turned at an angle. Okay, that's on there. And next is Little Wizard. Because this one is colored in green, green and green, I'm going to color this one in. How about red with blue? I want to say jammies, but more blue wizard clothes on him. Look at him. Isn't he handsome? It goes really well with the card because his blue clothes match the blue card base. Okay, so here is the words. I stamp them on a bit of the scrap paper and just stamp it at the bottom. I think this is the one I trimmed it out of. And with your scissors, you could trim it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Or you could get a paper cutter and do it perfect. But because this paper is going to be vanilla on vanilla, if it isn't exactly perfect, you can't tell. So I will trim this. And I'm going to trim it a little bit close. Does that look straight? No, I cut it crooked, which is fine. And I'll cut the top part and I'm just lining my cut up with the top of the H and the top of this H, all the tops of these tall letters. Okay, there it is. And this is going to work for me, but I want you to know 
it's not perfect. If I put it on here, you'll see that this is at a little bit of an angle. This is going up a little bit, but like I said, because I'm putting it vanilla on vanilla, you won't be able to tell. So, how about I put dimensionals? This one has no dimensionals on them. I'm going to put dimensionals on this wizard. It just makes it a little bit harder to get it into the envelope, but I think he wants dimensionals. I need a little guy. I don't think a big one will fit on here. Yeah, too big. Too big. So here's a little one. But before I stick him down, I will do linen thread for <laughs> let go for his banner. So to do that, take a knot on either end. And I try to get the knot close to the edge. You probably don't even have to do knots if you don't want to. However much detail you want, it's cute. The gnomes are just cute. Okay, so now I have a knot on this end and a knot on that end. So, before I put them onto the gnome, I'm going to put it onto the back of this little banner. Should I do dimensionals? Probably. I'll do mini dimensionals, two of them. Okay, so here's two mini dimensionals. I think I want the knot below the banner. Boy, I need more fingers. Okay, so I'll put this one here. And the knot is just peeking out underneath this dimensional. I'll put this up close here in just a minute. Okay, it's on my fingers. Let me see if you can see. So, the knot is here, dimensional is there. Dimensional, knot. I'm going to put it on the back of here, and I'll hold this up close in just a minute again. And if you make your string too long or too short, it's okay. I'll show you how to fix it. This string ended up being a little bit short. But that's a good thing, because if it happens to you, you'll know what to do. So on here, you can see the knot, dimensional, ready for me to take the paper off. A little bit of a hoop, and then the same on this thing, this side. And it's okay if they're going kind of different directions because these wizards, they're gnomes and they're not perfect. Okay, so this, I want it to be, hey, because I made it so so small. Well, let me think on that. Um, because I was going to put this over. Actually, it's perfect size. But until I do that, hold on just a minute. So for a spot for the string to go in, I'm going to put a little cut from here right into, right before you get to the palm of his hand. Or maybe down a little bit into the palm. I wonder if I could do that. This one, I, I'm going to try different. So now I'm going to take this string and put it, slide it into that slit. Oh, so cute. Boy, I don't know if I could get this the exact right size again. No, because, oh, look at this. Now the string is going over his eyes. It's making it too short. So, okay, scrap that. Back to where we were. So, if you make your string too short, like I did, 
just cut it right in the middle because this is going to be hiding underneath the gnome. And put a dimensional on here, a little one. I'm making this harder than it really is. And let's take off these papers. And I will place, so where do you want the banner? This one I did just a little below his nose. This one I'll do maybe a little bit farther down. Hope it's not, it's not centered. Okay, so there it is. And now these strings, I'll put it right through that slit. If I can find it. Where's the slit? Oh, here it is. And then put the string into the dimensional. Ugh, I'm stuck to it. Okay, and then do the same with the other side. So if the string was too big, you could have it kind of looping down here. The string is too short, so I have two separate pieces. Phew! Okay, so I will put him here. And put down gnome. And now if needed, I can adjust where the dimensional stick. Okay, so he is done. When you look at them in person, you'll see all those little steps. He's really cute. Okay, so for the inside, just words. That's good. So let me get an inside paper. Holly Jolly Everything, a little Christmas wish. You're a friend like no mother. That's cute too. How about you're a friend? You're a friend like no mother. I saw somebody who took some cutout letters like we did last week at class. And they put, instead of Noel, they put G, Gno, Gnowell with the G in front of it. Now I was trying to somehow add that on, but this card is kind of small. Okay, and we'll do this in Memento Black. Oh, when you're putting your stamps on your blocks, you could do it this way, and you could try to line it up. Chances are slim, you'll get it. So, put it right there on your paper, line up the block with the stamp, now it's straight. That's so cute. Those little words are so delicate. <coughs> it's perfect for this card. <clears throat> okay, that goes on here. Excuse me. Okay, that's better. So there it is. <clears throat> and it goes with, <clears throat> excuse me, it goes with this. But wouldn't you love receiving that? So I'll put it in <clears throat> halfway. 
way. Cute, cute. And here's the rest of them. <clears throat> so, if you put three of them in the box. Oh, and this one has all these little pearls on top. So cute. I put this little banner down at the bottom because when I tried to stamp it, the word other went off the edge. <clears throat> okay. I like this one. I like the colors on them. So, there's the three of them. And this project is ready to travel. So, give me a call. Send me a text. Let me know if you would like it to come your way. And I hope you have a great day with no smoke. And until next time, thank you. Bye.